Amen. Yeah, Pastor uh, David and I, we were having lunch a couple of three weeks ago or so, and, and uh, I had really been sensing um, that God was wanting to speak and emphasize um, deliverance and finding freedom, this kind of thing, uh, in, in many different levels. And um, I actually sh said it to Pastor David, I, you know, I think you should do a... a a series on that or something. He said, well, I think you should do it. I said, so you better watch out what you uh, ask, mention to your pastor sometimes. But, uh, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> also, um, you know, you're talking about 333 and all. And um, well, well, we had, I, I had an alarm go off at four o'clock this morning. You know, it, it, but my wife's alarm went off by accident. And um, and so when I look, look at that, it was four zero zero, you know. And four zero forty is the number of testing in the Bible, and uh, and then it was four hundred, you know. Four is so it's multiplied testing. And at four in the morning, that was the prophetic word that I was feeling at that time, and the, the message that I got. But um, praise God, I was able to press through and <laughs> praise praise the Lord <laughs> in the middle of it. Um, but um, yeah, I'm glad to see everybody again here. If it's not if it's not a lockdown, it's a it's a snow down and snowed in, blizzard and stuff. You know, every, we've all been through. It's just uh, crazy. Uh, you know, people were saying, that, you know, I'm glad that 2020 is over. Going into 2021, I mean, boy, they got that wrong, huh? But um, uh, you know. When, while I was in Russia, and we were in Russia, one time, I um, we had a new office, and and to to park outside, it was on a a grade, and so right in the time it was fall time, and the um, so the weather it gets really cold, everything it goes way below freezing at night, and 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 in the daytime it'll warm up and uh, get real messy, and so. Anyway, when I went there, it was it was in the evening. Uh, it hadn't gotten dark yet, so there was still water around, water puddles. They were just, this building was brand newly built, and so the road was still dirt around the building. hadn't really been finished. On the side where I could park, it, it had pavement. But anyway, so I parked there, but and because I was on a, a grade, I I engaged the emergency brake. So I went up there for a few hours. You know, it gets dark. I was doing whatever I was doing, and so I come back, and and my vehicle won't go anywhere. And some of you guys probably can imagine what happened because I had I had gone through water puddles and I engaged the emergency brake, and then the temperature drops below freezing. So my brakes pads froze to my brake cylinder, and so the car it won't go anywhere. And I'm wondering what. So I have to. I have to take off the tire, get my uh, uh, hammer out, hammer on the brake pads to break the ice, and then put the tire back on, and then I can go home. So um, I was reminded of some things this, uh, this past week and some other experiences, but it was so funny because when I was going home that night, <laughs> I saw another car. And it, he was he was going down the road, and his his tire was frozen like mine. But he he was pulling it; only one tire would spin, so the other tire was squealing all the way down the street. He didn't know to to hammer it. So anyway, um, so much for my my uh, Russia stories. But um, freezing weather. So we're going to talk, yeah, about finding freedom today, and. And, and daily defeating fleshly and even sometimes demonic influences and, and overcoming the world. And, uh, and so let's pray before we begin. Father, we thank you, Lord, so much for what you have done for us, giving your son Jesus, Lord, to set us free. Lord, that we can enjoy the freedom in Jesus Christ and we can win the battles Lord, that you send us into and, and that you have called us to, Lord God. And so I, I pray, Father, that every person here 
today, all of us, Lord, that we would be able to walk in all of the freedom for which you set us free, Lord, that no one here today, Father, that they would go away from here tormented in any way, Father, or oppressed, but, but Lord, they could be set free or at least set on the path of freedom, walking in freedom, Lord, and we thank you for that, and we praise you in Jesus' name. So, um, you know, one of the things I think that, that is good to do when we're talking about freedom, especially against um, the devil and the things that he does against us, is, is to remember to laugh. Because, uh, it, well, number one, it makes God happy when, when we're happy. Because if we're not happy, you know, if, in you know, the Old Testament, if you went into the presence of the king and you weren't happy, you remember Nehemiah, he got scared. He was like, because the king noticed that he wasn't happy in his presence. I mean, you could lose your head. And so we of all people should be rejoicing. You know, that's why he's encouraging us to rejoice and rejoice. But the other thing is it makes God happy, but it also makes the devil nervous uh, because he's like, why are, why are they happy? I'm doing all this stuff against them, but, but they... To, to make him unhappy, you know, and so, he, and, and it weakens what he's trying to do against us when we laugh, and, you know, my, when I was a little kid, my parents, uh, there was a, there was a cartoon, uh, maybe some of you, but I know most of you would not remember this, but there was a little cartoon, and it was called Casper the Friendly Ghost, and, uh, and so they, they bought me this little Casper doll, and it would talk. You would pull the string, and then it would talk, you know, ooh, Casper or something. And, um, and so I, I was thinking about that, and it just reminded me that when I was thinking of this. And, um, and uh, how do you know when a ghost is sad? He starts boo-hooing. Uh, how do ghosts stay fit by exorcising? Like, oh. Okay, um, do you know a ghost's favorite religion? Buddhism. But I know this will be your favorite for some of you. So um, uh, what's in a ghost's nose? Boogers. Anyway, we'll, we'll move on from that. And, uh, <laughs> uh, um, God wants us to be free, to walk in freedom. But, in, and that's, that's the way I think that it's good to, to speak about it today. People, a lot of times they get nervous when we talk about uh, deliverance. We talk about uh, demons. You talk about um, uh, exercising and that type of thing. You know, uh, it's like if you have that kind of ministry, in the church, don't put on your door, you know, the exorcist. That wouldn't be a good thing to put there um, to encourage anybody to want to come to your ministry. Um, but I have been blessed, and I, I in in this area, and in, in in receiving freedom from the Lord. Um, and so I, I, I have some real compassion toward people dealing with, with some of these things because, um, I mean, I was tormented for several years, on, even on the mission field as a missionary, with fears and panics that would come against me. And praise God, the Lord de delivered me from that. And I'll share a little bit about how that happened today because I think it's, it's a real key. But um, one of the things is... is just praying that what the devil and the enemy is hiding will be exposed because he wants to hide things in our lives. And that's, that's he, he would like, um, you know, the churches, the, there are many churches that don't even believe that, that the devil is even active anymore. They don't believe in the devil or they believe that um, all those things are just psychosomatic or um, a mental illness and and, and things like that totally relegate it to the, the mind and the, the mental area, and they don't believe and believe in the spiritual things. You know, when I was in college, 
in a, in a, in a um, religion department. That's what they were, they were teaching. And, uh, and so if, if, if that's the way it is, when I mean, the devil can hide very easily in a place like that. And so we're, we'll talk about, you know, recognizing our enemy. But the point I'm make, bringing out here in the beginning is that Jesus died so that we could live free, free to serve him in joy, free to serve him in peace. Um, the Bible says that it was for freedom that Christ set us free. And if Jesus went through all the suffering, all the hell, all the torture that he went through, that we could be free, that we could have joy, that we could have peace, that we could walk in that. I don't want to allow the littlest bit of that in my life or, or in my family or any, in anyone around me in Jesus' name if, if, if I can be of help. The Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free in John 8, 32. Many times, um, and I found this true in my life, just knowing the truth many times is all that you need. And the enemy, the things that, that, that used to bind you and, and enslave you or the chains that were around you are just, just broken. I'll, I'll never forget hearing Kenneth Hagin tell his testimony because when he was uh, you know when he was born he was born with a deformed heart and I'm not going to tell his whole story but he was healed of, of uh, he had, were five doctors on his case and they, they said you can't live past the age of 16 and so he had all these things wrong with his 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 his, uh, his chest and internal organs because he was born premature but he was healed uh, when he was 16 and but he said for several years after that there was this spirit of fear that was he said it was like a little dog that was the way he described it that would follow him everywhere he want, went that that it's going to come back on you again it's going to come back on you this is going this same thing that happened to you before it's going to happen again and he said he said it would just torment him from time to time but he was reading a book by Lillian Dr. Lillian B Yeomans about healing and healing in Christ and it, he said he it was one statement that he read when he read that statement of truth he said he saw that dog was just gone it just disappeared he said he was in the middle of the night he turned the light on he hopped up and he ran around his bed uh, praising God he got in the bed again and he, and he did that about three times he would wake up he was so overjoyed but the point I'm making is you will know the truth that's why knowing the truth brothers and sisters is so so precious it's so so important we take it for granted the truths that we have so much of the world you know is living in darkness and bound by so much of so many of these things and and praise god in second corinthians chapter 3 it says where the spirit of the lord is the holy spirit there is freedom freedom praise god it's a it's a glorious thing to be set free amen praise god free to do what is right to be able to uh, be free from lust free from sexual immorality over victory over anger over pride over porn over o overeating over spending to be able to read your bible in peace and wait upon god worship the lord um the the scripture that I want to open with really here is Mark 5 15 and it's about the the man who Jesus set free in the in the area of the region of the Gadarenes it says then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been it's here in the New American Standard says demon possessed I, I, I think it, a better translation would really be demonized even though he could have been totally possessed but demonized and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind and they were afraid 
So the first thing it says about him, you know, there he was clothed and in his right mind. You know, that's a good point to make today. A lot of people don't realize that that you're in your right mind is when you're clothed, not half clothed or, or even, you know, no clothes. There's, uh, there's so much of that uh, going because going on today, when, when, when we're in our right mind, when we're walking in, in security and peace in Jesus, then we will dress in a, in a modest way and... <clears throat> appropriately the way a person would with his right mind but Jesus God gives us a, the spirit of a sound mind not the spirit of fear amen he sets us free from the spirit of fear but but he gives us what kind of spirit a spirit of power a spirit of love that's beautiful a beautiful thing a spirit of love and a sound mind that's when you think God's thoughts you will have a healthy mind. If you think and meditate on the devil's thoughts and his lies, that is gonna, that is gonna screw with your mind. That's gonna mess up your mind and lead you into mental issues. Don't believe his lies. Know the truth and the truth will set you free. Our founding fathers here in America, they, they wanted freedom so badly. They fought a battle for seven years against the most powerful army in the world with, with one of the most weakest armies in the world. They fought for seven years. They gave up. They gave up. They, these weren't people who were poor who founded our country. They, they, many of them were rich. They had lands. They were willing. They risked all that. They were being tempted and said, if you, if you will show your allegiance, we'll give you other lands. We'll do this. And, 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 but they wanted freedom. And, and we've lost a lot of that in our, sad to say, in our nation today. Uh, people, instead of wanting freedom... Uh, many, in many cases, they just want to be taken care of. And if you've been under tyranny before, if you've been under tyranny, then you appreciate freedom. Many people who have come from other countries here to America, they appreciate the freedom we have here actually a whole lot more than many Americans do, especially many of the young people today that have been through um, the indoctrination and brainwashing in the uh, universities and schools. But they, th our founding fathers, they also knew the, knew the truth of these verses that I just read about freedom. And, and so they, were, they knew how valuable that was and that, that Christ came to set us free. So it's something that's worth fighting for. Freedom. And I'm talking, you know, I'm referring to what they did physically for our nation, but I'm referring to spiritually, that if you are going to be free in Christ, you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to fight some spiritual battles because you have an enemy, and that's what I'm going to talk about in just, just a second here. Um, any area of your life, that if, if it wasn't there, and your life would be better, and you would, you would be better off, you would be freer, then God wants to help set you free from that. He wants to help, and we all have different issues and things that we're dealing with to one degree or another. And so this first, um, or the next point I just want to make is make clear that we do have an enemy and that we are at war, spiritual warfare, we are, we are involved in battles, whether you recognize it or not, I think many of you do, but God wants you to be very aware and have crystal clear clarity about this, that um, this is what we're involved in in life. This is why we have many times the struggles that we have and, and the problems that come against us. Um, 
Jesus said, he told us in, in uh, John 6, 6, uh, 16, 33, in the world, he made it clear, you will have tribulation. Tribulation. He said, this is, you, you, you know, you're not going to escape that as long as you're here on this earth. He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And because he lives in you, because he lives in me, we can overcome. But we have to learn how to overcome, and we have to re realize that we do have an enemy. Um, and that's why we need armor, because we are in battles. We are in a spiritual battle. Um, and we know from 1 Peter 5, 8, that the devil in 9... He want, he's looking for people to devour. He's looking for somebody to eat. The Bible says he's like a roaring lion or a ravenous wolf. If someone is weak or, or another, another animal, you know, is weak or wounded, that is the animal that the, the lion, the tiger, uh, the wolf will want to attack. And that's... that's that's who he's looking for. So you need to grow strong in the Lord. That's why we are encouraged over and over in the Bible to be strong in the Lord. Moses, under the direction of the Lord, told Joshua, be strong and courageous. We are encouraged to do this, to be strong and courageous, to grow strong in the Lord. Um, where where there may be weaknesses, where there may be wounds. Let yourself, allow yourself to be healed because these are going to attract, attract the attacks of the enemy, the roaring lion, the devil, the wolves. You know, and also they're demonic forces. They're also like rats and they're attracted to garbage. I won't get into it, but we, we, we had a rat get into our, our house last year in a certain way, but um, they're, they're attracted to garbage. And if we get the spiritual garbage out of our lives, if you move, remove the spiritual garbage and those things that attract them, in many ways, that will solve the majority of the problems in our lives. But I want us to look at 1 Peter 5, verse 8. It says, be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Why? Why be on the alert? He says, because your adversary, the devil. So you have an enemy, somebody who hates you. I don't know if you've ever had anybody who hated you before. Um, but this is, this is somebody who who genuinely does this is why we need the weapons we need the armor it says he the devil your adversary he prowls around like a roaring lion seeking somebody to devour devour you spiritually emotionally mentally physically with illness wh however whatever he can do but in verse 9 it says but resist him firm in your faith it doesn't say resist him weak in your faith, firm in your faith to resist the devil. Um, so he's seeking somebody to be able to devour. That means he can't devour everybody. So he's looking for somebody that he can. And you and I need to make sure that we're not one of those people and, and no one in our family others around us that that he can devour you know we as ministers part of our job a shepherd what's a shepherd he's looking out for wolves to protect the sheep david he had a lot of experience doing that as a shepherd and so there has to be a reason why he can't devour you as opposed to somebody else. When you know the truth, when you know how to resist him, then he's going to go look for the weak. He's going to go look for the wounded. He's going to go look for these kinds of easier prey. And we want to strengthen 
people. We want to build them up. We want to train them to when he sees you, he sees me, he sees us, he says, I, I'm heading the other way. When you wake up, he's like, I'm out of here. He's awake. She's awake today. I'm not in, going in that territory anymore. People, even Christians, many times they allow the devil to attack them because they don't realize to, how to resist it and that they can resist many things that are, like I spoke of earlier, that are, are hidden, uh, the way the enemy comes against us. And so he's not like, you know, the, the story of the three little pigs when the wolf comes and says, uh, you know, little pig, little pig, please let me come in. You know, when, if you say, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin, that's, that's not going to, uh, you know, that's not going to make, the, the hair on your chinny chin chin isn't going to scare away the devil. So we need to know real spiritual protection. In China, they have a tradition that comes from uh, shooting fireworks off every, every time at the new year, every new year. Also, when they get married, when they start a new business. But it's rooted in the fireworks were to scare away demons from your mar new marriage, your new year, that it would be prosperous and so forth. But those things, there are things that, that we try and that people try and use that don't do any good at all. We have to know what the, the, the real spiritual and divinely powerful weapons the Bible speaks of that helps us to overcome you know i saw a, a movie many years ago i think it was called grizzly man i don't know if any of you ever saw that we were still living in china there was a guy's name was timothy treadwell and there was a young lady with him very sad um but he he this guy he he loved to, he would go to alaska every year and he would hang out with the bears and he would get real close to them and 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 hang around with them and and uh, I mean, he was crazy. Uh, and he even said, told people, he said, one of the days I'm, I'm going to get eaten, you know, I'm get." But he would go to schools and, and, and tell the kids, and he was, he was a big hit, you know, about, about uh, this kind of new age environmentalist, uh, love all the animals, uh, you know, hug the bears and everything type of uh, attitude. He, but the thing is, is, he denied that a predator could or would devour him. He wouldn't believe the truth. He believed, it's so sad, he believed a lie. And what's even sadder is the young lady who followed him there. So tragic. Um, and what are some of the lies today that even Christians many times believe? Oh, oh, that horror movie's okay to watch. Oh, that TV show about vampires is okay. That book about witchcraft is okay. It's okay to look at porn. That's not hurting anybody. It's okay to look at those sex scenes in the movies. Spirit guides aren't bad. Seeking to make contact and get messages from the dead, my, my loved ones who've passed on, that's not dangerous. All these things. Seeking guidance from uh, psychics and mediums and horoscopes and all these things. No, oh, that's not dangerous. You know, when I was, a, when I was growing up, uh, young, teenager, in college even, I'd go to a bookstore. There was, there was I don't know, there was no section, you, you couldn't, there was no section of, of books about uh, witchcraft and new age and all these kind of things. I mean, when you go to a bookstore, because they don't have a whole lot of them anymore, but if you go to a bookstore today and see one, they have a massive section. It's full of books about New Age, about witchcraft, about uh, casting spells and doing all these kinds of things. Um, there, were, there were only two, um, you know, there was, was either you could call him a psychic or a medium. I remember when I was when I was a kid, there was this one guy. His name was Edgar Casey. He was a medium. 
His family said he was a large, but anyway, they called him a medium. But anyway, um, Jean Dixon was the other one. She was known as the psychic. That was, that was all there was in America. You know, I mean, I'm not telling you anything new. And now they've got hotlines. You can call. Call your psychic, you know, and, uh, and pay them. And, and it's just, uh, if the, Jesus said that in the last days, deception would increase. That's one of the main things that we as Christians, we need to be aware of. False miracles, false uh, signs, false Christs. When we were in Russia, um, there was a, a, a lady, Marie Christ was her name, and she was said that she was Jesus who had come back. And she had this a, a, a massive following. And and. When we left Russia and God led us to China, I thought, well, we left all that behind. When I got to Russia, I mean, when we got to China, there was the same thing there. There was a, a, a woman who said that she was Christ who had come back, and it was, the, it was a, a cult called Eastern Lightning, one of the most wicked cults uh, you could ever find, so deceptive. And um, this, my secretary's sister, she got sucked into that cult, they, when she tried to leave, they put her, tied her in a bag and, and beat her. She was able to, to get away later. But there, I'm just saying this to say, you know, we've seen many, there are many types of cults, many types of false Christs. We've seen them periodically come up through, through the years. David Koresh, Jim Jones, all these other ones who, who, have a demonic anointing on them and lead so many people tragically astray. So we have an, an, an enemy. And so ghosts are not dead people. I don't know if some of you, I hope all of you realize this and know this already. Ghosts are not dead people. They're demons who are trying to deceive loved ones into thinking that, that they're your deceased loved one and that you can communicate with them in some fa form or fashion. Um, it was crazy. You know, right after you asked me to share about this, I, f I, I saw a program. It, as it just came up on the, on the television. It was called Surviving Death. And it... Um, I was, I was so stunned by that to see um, not just people talking about their experience coming back from death, but they had many, many other um, episodes that were people who were trying to contact their, their deceased loved ones. And, and all of the, the groups here in the United States that are doing that, and then other people who go into, quote, haunted houses because they, they want to contact the, this spirit world. And, I, I, and different ones of them who have different, uh, really so sad, I don't have time to get into all of it, and experiences that, that deceive people and think that they have, are rein, they're the, the uh, reincarnation of somebody who died before. And all of these things you can see are demons that are, that are deceiving people uh, to think that, that it's your deceased loved one. Some, inc some incredible things that were happening to make them think that. You know, um, I remember, um, well, let me just read this scripture first here from, in, from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18. It says, There shall not be found among you anyone and the reason I'm bringing this up reading this is because in the United States when I saw this program I saw this is this is this is massive in the United States now I was shocked how so many people are clueless about the demonic realm and, and have encountered this through uh, new age I mean I knew new age was big and all but I, I've just never been around to have much contact with these people but in Deuteronomy 18, it says, There shall not be found among you anyone who uses divination, one who practices witchcraft, one who interprets omens or a sorcerer 
or who casts a spell or a medium or a spiritist um, or one in the King James it says one who consults a ghost or one who calls up the dead a necromancer for whoever does these things and these things are detestable to the Lord in, in the King James it says they're an abomination to God why would God say this because this, can he want to withhold something that, that would be fascinating to us in some way? No, he, he's telling us these things to protect us, protect his people. Um, so a ghost haunt, haunting someone's house is not their dead relative. You know, when I was thinking about this, I, it was so sad. I was thinking about the, the, the House of Representatives is almost like the haunted House of Representatives now. I was thinking, man, they, somebody needs to go in there and really cast some stuff out of there. Um, um, so the, the spirits of, of someone's dead loved ones, they're not in that house making those sounds, causing those weird manifestations and these different creaks and cracks and things to happen. These are deceptive, demonic forces, and scores of people are falling prey to that. I remember when we were, we were in China, in, um, in Xi'an, on East Street, there's a, a church there, Free Self Church. The pastor went to visit there a couple of times, but the director of the orphanage that we worked with, she told us that... Uh, when that pastor's wife died, you know, in China, many people, they will put up a picture of their loved one because there, there is ancestor worship in China and much of the, the Orient. And, but Christians, they would put a picture of their loved one there, but, but, but those who aren't Christians, they'll put sacrifices there. They'll put cigarettes. They'll put food. They'll, you know, at a certain time of the year, they'll put fake money. They'll burn fake money to them because they think it, you know, that puts a little extra in their bank account down there in the, the, the nether world. But um, in, in Cambodia, they even burn houses and cars, little paper ones to send to them. So, but, but Christians, I mean, you, he would put the picture up of their loved one, but he didn't put any food. He didn't put anything like that. But one night when he was walking through near that section of the house, he heard a voice, a female voice, saying, I'm hungry. I need something to eat. Now, he said the hair on the back of his neck just shot out, but he didn't, he didn't go prepare any, any food. And there are other stories like that I could tell, but he just, and he said, there is no message there is, no, there is no message that you have for me either. And, but many people, they hear something supernatural and immediately think, oh, wow, this must be, maybe it's God. Maybe it's, it's the, you know, the, 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 the good witches, the good spirits or something out there. Um, but what can be more dangerous to us as Christians, though, in the world, we in, in in our experience, is the is the the devil working to try to get us to hide sin in our lives, and private sins. You know, it's so tragic what we just found out this last week about uh, Ravi Zacharias and and um, his his ministry, his fall. But King David, when he should have been out fighting the Lord's battles. What was he doing? He was surfing the internet, looking at things he shouldn't be looking at, and and bam, he gets taken down. Um, and so here in a, in America, things some of the 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 ruling principalities. I'm just going to mention quickly because I I need to wrap things up soon. But in some of the main spirits we have to deal with is I believe, and you you could there can be others, but I believe one is a spirit of lying. Um, it's it's to nowadays it's like, do you solemnly swear to lie and tell lies and nothing but the lies when you're in court and other places and in Congress, um, and 
spirits of spirit of immorality, in, worship of immoral sex, spirit of deception, Marxism and socialism. Um, and so we need to know, we've talked about some of the enemy's manifestations and his, his strategies, and we know that one of the main things he does is attack the word of God, the truth of the word of God. He did it with Eve, and he'll try to steal the word that is sown in your heart. Um, he has come for deception. And one of the deceptions is that we as Christians, you know, they're, they're like 12 different myths. And I'm just going to just mention a couple right here related to demonic activity. But one is, you know, one extreme that Christians can't be influenced or have a demon oppressing them. The other extreme is once you realize that, you, that they can oppress you at times or demonize you, then the devil tries to make you think that everything is a, is a demon, and that's, that's, that's false as well. We, we have the flesh, Paul said, to deal with. And you, uh, many times what people are wanting somebody to cast out of them is the flesh. And you can't cast out the flesh. You have to crucify the flesh. You have to do, Paul said, I die daily. He said, I buffet my body and I make it my slave. That's what you have to do with the flesh. And your mind, you have to renew your mind. And, the, and in 2 Corinthians 10, it says, Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. You and I, we can control our thoughts and the lies and the thoughts of, of the enemy. So, and, and fear and doubt and division. But, but you have to begin to use the armor and the weapons that God has given you. You have to resist the devil. I have to resist the devil. He's, God is not going to do it for you. He is not going to swing your sword for you. In James 4, 7, it tells us, in, starting at verse 6, but he gives a greater grace. Therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Tell your neighbor, he will flee from you. You don't, you don't have to, you first need to make sure you're submitted to God, but you don't have to, you don't have to, if you need to call the pastor, they're, they're there to help us resist. But here he's saying, he, God wants us to grow to the place where we resist the devil ourselves. How did Jesus resist the devil? Three times, three times he, he said to the, to the devil, it's quoted in Reader's Digest. Is that what he said? It's in, in the, from the newspaper. Here, this person, this is their opinion. No, he said, it is written. And he used the scripture three times before he ever said, get out of here so we need to put greater emphasis on the word of God we need to speak the word of God more over our own lives over our families over our children over our churches over everything speaking the, especially our own selves and Jesus knew the word of God and when you speak the word he the enemy gets weaker and weaker, and you meditate on the Word of God. He gets weaker and weaker until you can just go. He's gone. Whereas if you tried to do it in the beginning, it might not be as easy. There was a Mexican student. He, he, they tried, we were on a, out on a camp, and they were trying to help him get free. He was saying, he was just, he was just being tormented so terribly, and he's saying, get him off of me, get him off, stop it, stop it, help me, God, help me, God. And um, when we came back, in, he was in one of my classes, and the same thing started manifesting in the class. I said, brother, I said, do something for me. I said, I want you, he said, would you, would you agree with me and do this? He said, yes, I will. He said, I said, I want you to start saying with your own mouth, 
in the name of Jesus, go from me. Be gone in Jesus' name. And he, he began to he not just ask God to set me free. You see, Jesus, he didn't say, God, please speak to that mountain for me. God told us to speak to the mountain. We have to speak to the mountain. We have to speak to the problem. And it will move in Jesus' name. Humility is a weapon. Love is a weapon. Thanksgiving is a weapon. Praise is a weapon. But we are called to do the works of Jesus. And part of that is to set captives free. That was part of what Jesus did Every, everywhere he went. He's our mentor. He's our example. The Bible says the works, Jesus said, the works I do, you shall do also. And these signs will follow. So if you need help, you need prayer, there are many people here today, and there will be people down here to pray with you to help you get free and break, see something broken over your life, or at least get you set on the path of freedom so that you can begin walking and enjoying that greater freedom that Jesus has for you because that, that is why Jesus died. Not just so we would go to heaven, but that so we could live free. And from that freedom, you also begin to help other people enjoy the freedom that come, comes through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Every stripe, every lick, every curse, every mocking that was done to him, all that he went through in hell was so that we could be free. And so that we could also then, he told us, you go forth and these signs will follow those that believe. And you are believers. And so don't be afraid of the calling and the power that is in your life. Rise up, laugh in the face of the enemy and the things that come to you. Know the truth and the truth will set you free and you will be used of God to help other people be set free because there are scores and scores people that you can't imagine and I believe this is why the Lord confirm that to Pastor David and myself is because we're going to need to be doing this more and more, I believe, here in 2021 and in the days and years ahead. So let's stand, and I want to pray. Father, I thank you for the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that at the name of Jesus, mountains move, demons tremble, conditions change, healing comes, peace comes in the name of the Prince of Peace. And Lord, we just speak peace over your people today. Lord, over every situation, over every lie, we rebuke every lie, we rebuke every deception, every fear in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray, Lord, that your people, anyone here today struggling, Lord, that they would be set free, strengthened and encouraged to go forth and be used of you to bring hope, to bring freedom, to bring deliverance to the world around them in Jesus' name. If you need prayer today, we're going to be here today. We're going to just to agree with you, to see you, encourage, set free, and know the truth that God is speaking for your life. I just want to add to uh, what uh, Brother Clay said, and he did a great job of just laying this out, but uh, I won't go into the whole story, but when Lester Summerall was building a church in the Philippines, he couldn't get property, and he was having a lot of problems, and they had a young lady there in Manila that was uh, had been put in jail because she was so demonized and being tortured by the demons, they would actually leave fang marks in her flesh that they had locked her up in order to protect her and to protect other people from her because when she would curse a guard, they would die within two days. And so it was a real, nobody could help her. Doctors who checked her out would have their hand on her arm and there would be 
she would scream when they moved her hand there would be fang marks this is a real severe case i'm just saying this to get this point across lester summerall was in his hotel room and heard this on the radio them talking about it and the lord said to him i want you to go down to that prison and i want you to set that girl free and here's what i want you to hear Lester said to the Lord, Lord, I'm trying to build a church. <laughs> I'm trying to build a church in this area, and I'm having trouble already getting support, getting property. This is not something I need to get mixed up in. And, the, and he said, the Lester said to the Lord, get somebody else. And the Lord said this to Lester, I haven't got anybody else. Now listen, there's some people who you're the best Christian they know, and the Lord doesn't have anybody else but you. To look at them and say, you can be free in Jesus. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray the prayer of deliverance over you. While we were worshiping, I just saw a young lady with a spirit of depression and a spirit of loneliness was harassing her. And if that's you, I just break it off right now in Jesus' name. Listen, you can be, when a spirit of loneliness is on you, you can be surrounded by people and be lonely. But we break that off right now in Jesus' name. And I'm just going to release you. And I want you to accept your authority in Christ to see others set free around you. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this teaching. We thank you for this impartation of truth. We receive it to ourselves and we accept the commissioning to be those who set other people free. And your people said amen. Amen. God bless you today. If you need prayer, we'll be down here.